Welcome back to the interview area. We are joined by Xander Shoffley, who is currently ranked number six in the world and a San Diego native. Xander, um, talk a little bit, I know you have already, but about what it means to play US Open here at home. It's really cool. I mean, I, to sum it up, I was walking on the first fairway today with my dad and we were joking about how six or seven years ago when they announced the site here on TV, my dad and I were sitting on the couch and um, we're like, hey, we need to do whatever we can to get into this tournament. And so here we are, you know, sitting here trying to win the thing. So. Maybe I didn't set lofty enough goals seven years ago, but um, they're, they're definitely lofty enough now. Um, talk a little bit about the state of your game and, and what your preparation has been like thus far this week. Since I am you know, local, I did spend the week here um, prior. I've played the course a lot. Obviously, it's, it's changing each and every night. Um, much firmer and faster green today. Rough is uh, getting longer each and every day as well. So um, with, the, with the heat wave coming through, I'm assuming the greens will get really firm. and. Um, you know, just been preparing uh, all last week and first couple days here. When Golf Channel USGA approached you about doing the From Many One show, um, talk about your decision to say yes and what the experience has been like. It's been fun. You know, I, I, I did grow up here, so it was a bit of a no-brainer, and um, it was cool to sort of share, you know, my hometown with everyone and kind of see uh, what I did growing up. Right here. In terms of uh, just the setup layout, how is it stacking up based on maybe your expectations and, and thoughts on what the USGA might do to the property? I mean, there's no sort of system uh, uh, in place to sort of, you know, change the greens too much in terms of like sub air or anything. This is a, you know, a municipal golf course, which is a cool part about all of this. But I think they're going to use the heat wave to their advantage. Um, they can lightly water, kind of feel it out from that perspective. But Overall, you know, if you look at the rough, it's it's sort of spotty. You can either get a really, really bad lie or not that bad of a lie, almost a flyer, which is kind of tricky to judge as well. So um, there's probably, I'm no agron agronomist, but there's probably anywhere from three to six different kinds of grass on property. And depending on where you miss it, uh, you can kind of get really lucky or really unlucky. Does the local knowledge play into that at all? Maybe just knowing what you can get out of some of those rough rides? Um, I've been, I've, I've played, I played 64 holes last week, starting on Wednesday. I played 18 Wednesday, 18 Thursday, 10 holes Friday, 18 Saturday. So I'm trying to make this more of a local place for me. You know, it's a really busy place to, uh, during the year, which I'm not sure if everyone is aware of. Um, it's hard to just come out here and play golf just for fun. So it was nice that it was shut down. I try to take advantage of that. So I'm trying to get as much, you know, local knowledge as I can just by playing a lot. Uh, t Times came out today. Have you taken a peek at them yet? Yeah, I saw uh, Max Home on Phil Mickelson. Yeah, so obviously Southern California mm -hmm. pairing. Will, will that be extra comfortable for you and talk about playing with Phil? Yeah, for some reason I, I figured that I'd be playing with Phil, um, random or not. I, it, it's a really good pairing. Uh, Max and Joe are great. Phil and Tim, obviously with the recent success, it's going to be nice to play with a recent major champ. And I think I played with, actually I know I played with Phil uh, at the Farmers already. So we've been, you know, we've had our, our fair shares uh, of goes around this property together. All right, thanks Xander, good luck this week. Thank you. Oh, yep, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Xander, you mentioned that with your dad six or seven years ago when the tournament was announced. I'm just curious, at that point, what would you have thought your career would look like in 2021? I mean, I, I dreamed my career would look like this. Um, <clears throat> to actually do it is, is something else. But uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I was on my couch, I was an amateur, I was trying to be a pro, and you just never really know. Um, the transition from amateur golf to, to professional golf is, is tricky and difficult for some, and um, it's definitely a change, but yeah, this is, this is what I've dreamed of doing, and it's pretty cool to sit here and, and do it. Uh, Xander, talk a little bit about the decision to change the putting stroke, um, purely the timing of it, I mean, what, what was, was there any trepidation about you're getting close to this really big tournament for you in your hometown and maybe it's not a good idea? Sure. The, the change was, uh, was, was quick. It's still fresh in my bag. Um, I just felt like it's such a big advantage um, that I could utilize, uh, especially with, you know, on Poana. It's, they're tricky. They're tricky greens to putt on. The longer the day goes on, the bumpier they get with people walking on them. So launch conditions are very important out here. And, I feel like my launch is even more consistent with this arm lock style putter. And um, I did switch earlier. I just kind of threw it in the bag at Memorial. Um, not that it's not an important tournament, but because I knew there's, right. there's a chance of me wanting to use it here. So it's in the bag this week. Um, I'd be lying if I said I'm, you know, 100% super comfortable with it. But 
I think each and every day I get with it. You know, it hasn't even been two and a half weeks or three weeks since I've used it. So um, each day I, I, I use it, I get more and more comfortable. And, and how much is the Olympics in the back of your mind? I know it's a big deal for you, given your family history. Um, it looks like uh, everyone's bunched up there, or three or four guys are bunched mm -hmm. up there for the spots, and it will be decided this week. Is, is that in the back of your mind? Um, not as much as this one is. Thursday, uh, Thursday to Sunday is, was what it's in the back of my mind. You know, giving myself a chance there on Sunday is, is what I've been, you know, pushing for these last couple of weeks. So um, I'm aware of it, but I guarantee, if, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if I'm coming down the stretch on Sunday with a chance to win, I'm not going to be thinking about the Olympics. How big a deal is the Olympics to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've said this before. Um, I'd be lying if I said it was something I dreamed of as a kid. I dreamed of playing here as a kid. <laughs> when I dreamed of this playing here and trying to win this golf tournament, the Olympics in golf wasn't really a thing. So um, when you think of, uh, of you know, things you want to accomplish, it's, it's major championships, big golf tournaments, um, things like that. Olympics is such a fresh thing. It's such a we, we play so much golf throughout the year. It's not like uh, I'm, I've been working my whole career for this one moment, um, just like all the other athletes. So it's hard to compare it to golf. Uh, when you talk about other other specialties in, in sports. So um, it is a big deal. Obviously, representing a country is a huge honor. And um, But for right now, this is the most important thing to me. Thanks. Xander, after so many months with no fans on the course, and you and Phil paired together in San Diego, are you aware of how special of a moment that could be Friday, Saturday, if you guys both play well and large crowds following you around? And is that something you look forward to? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's so nice to to see people and to have people clap or even ah when things aren't going great. Um, it just feels more natural. Sort of as a, when I turned pro, I had, I had I played in front of people and it was something I had to get used to. So I was more in that boat where it was it was really weird when no one was around. So it, it feels things are starting to feel more normal and it definitely helps to have fans rooting you on. You mentioned the Phil dynamic, some of the extra kind of rapport and uh, maybe competition you've built up in the last year or so. Does that spill into your rounds together at all, or do you think it's business as usual? Uh, business as usual. It, it'll make us feel more comfortable playing against each other. You know, we're not, we're here to win this individual golf tournament. We're not going to be playing some sort of side game uh, during this event. Um, uh, but I think, you know, us playing together will we'll make our pairing more enjoyable just because we're, we're more familiar. Last one behind me. Oh. How much do you remember being here in 2008? What did you walk around with your dad? Take kind of paint that picture. Yeah, I, I lost my crew that I was with. Um, I couldn't drive a car, so someone brought me. Can't remember who that was. Um, I was on the 18th. I, I jumped ahead to watch Tiger finish, and I just remember the putt he made on 18, and me being up against a tree, and being part of that uh, environment, and how cool and special that moment was, and how motivated I was uh, shortly after to go practice and try and hit the same shot he hit there, hit the same putt. So um, a lot of that day, I remember just the last hole. How much, sorry, how much uh, has this date, has this tournament been circled on, on your calendar? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, once I've become more established, I realize that, you know, I'm going to have an entry in and um, definitely in terms of, you know, farmer's prep and, and stuff like that, I've, I've paid more attention and try to focus more and try to come out more when I can, you know, when they do close the course down to public. I've tried to make extra effort to come out here and practice just to get more familiar with the property for an event like this. So um, I've definitely been, been trying my best. To that end, um, do you remember the first time you had a putt out here, probably back in high school, when it broke uphill because it was going towards the ocean? And, and, and how do you re, sort of rewire your mind when you're standing over a putt to know that it, it might actually break uphill or not break? Because Yeah, the tricky part with high school is we played a lot on punch greens. so. <laughs> putts were putts were breaking left and right when they shouldn't be and uh, going straight when they shouldn't be. So no real memory to pull on from high school besides the views and the tee shots and um, just the fun experience of being out here as a kid. All right. Thanks, Xander. Well, thank you.